My name is Mike Gabin and welcome to my KSP campaign. We are out here with the Korion 1, which has just completed a series of temperature scans about the moon. And is pretty much ready to head on back to Kerbin. But uh, at the end of the last episode, I started contemplating that perhaps they can rescue Wilman Kerman here, who is also stuck in orbit. And perhaps we can get him back as well and sort of pick him up on the way out of here and fulfill that contract too. Now the first thing I got to check though is that whether the Korion 1 has the Delta V in order to pull this off because I don't want to end up having to come out and rescue them as well. So we're going to do some maneuver nodes here just to sort of add up the Delta V. So we're going to do this in a set of three burns. First burn is just to push out my apoapsis far away from the moon. That is so that I can make my inclination change. Uh, I guess technically I could make my inclination change right here in low orbit about uh, the moon, but that would be very expensive. Pushing up my apoapsis and making my inclination change out there where I'll be going much slower will mean my inclination change will be much cheaper. I will also be adjusting my periapsis so that it will be at the same altitude as Wilman's orbit. That'll be done at the same time when I do the inclination change. And then finally, a third burn will be to match orbits with Wilman uh, so that we can perform the rendezvous. And uh, while I'm doing all this and playing around with all this, you might have noticed that uh, I was on a bit of a hiatus from this particular series. I'll apologize for that. Uh, my game started to become, uh, well, rather unstable. <laughs> it was crashing quite a bit. And uh, with 1.1 just around the corner, I thought, you know what? Maybe the best thing to do would be to wait for 1.1 to come out, wait for the modders to come uh, to catch up, and then do uh rebuild the whole thing with 1.1 and see how that goes and that transition will be happening over the course of this particular video and although i won't say it's bug free you'll see that it is a lot more stable it doesn't seem to be wanting to crash anymore and uh the bugs seem to be more of an, aest an aesthetic nature and hopefully those get cleaned up as we go but anyway we are coming towards the end here and it's a total of 500, oh, sorry, 418 meters per second is all what these three burns are adding up to. And the Crime 1 has 523 meters per second in it right now. Uh, that's pretty tight. Remember, I still got to break orbit and get out of here. But remember, uh, it has the Kegel lander attached to it. And we're going to be leaving this in orbit. So I should actually detach the Kegel and see what my delta V is then. We'll just zoom in here and get the docking port. Oh, wrong one. I still have never figured out the logic behind what docking port to click on. Okay, there we go. Undock. Okay, and according to Kerbal Engineer, I now have 868 meters per second. That leaves me 450 meters per second after the rendezvous to break orbit and to get back to Kerbin Station. That's easy. No problem. Uh, but we're not quite done with this yet. I'm going to send Bill out. You see, I not only have to rescue Wilman, I also have to bring his scrap back down to Kerbin's surface. So we're going to have to dock with it. So I'm going to send Bill out, arm him with his trusty dusty KAS electric screwdriver. Crusty dusty? Trusty, yeah, uh, whatever. <laughs> and we're going to steal this, uh, this docking port so that we can attach it to whatever type of capsule Wilman's in, and then we can dock with it. But the problem is, it seems to see the docking port and the science, the whole science module, it seems to see that as one giant part. And that part is too big for Bill. He, he just, I, I, I couldn't remove the docking port no matter how I tried. So, uh, I had to concoct a plan B. Plan B was to redock with the Kegel, undock with the second set of uh, bigger docking ports, 1.25 meter docking ports, and see if I could not steal one of those. All right, Bill, round two. See if we can win this one. Again, we will arm ourselves with the electric screwdriver and all I want to do is 
grab that docking port that's on the Kegel and then just attach it on the Karayan. And then I guess at some point we'll have to come up here in the future and attach a new docking port onto the key. Okay, come on, come on, come on. This. Shoot. There. Okay. It ain't pretty. I don't care. <laughs> it's a little too. So we'll get Bill back into the Karayan. And we'll get ready to get ourselves out of here. All right. So this is the first of three burns. All I had to make sure of with this particular burn is that I am doing it at either the ascending or the descending node. It's really the node that I want to push out far away from the moon in order to make my inclination change more efficient. The exact altitude is at, not at all critical. Alrighty, and there we go. That'll do. Okay, now it's going to take us a few hours to get out there, so that gives us some time to pop back to the Kerbal Space Center. Yes, with the Karayan 1 soon to be on its way back home, it's time to do a little bit of crew rotation. Now, Carol and Bill, who are the scientists and engineers aboard the Karayan 1, they are ready to level up, so I do want to get them back down to the surface. So for that, I have Luya and Krisnik aboard the Kuryus here, and they're on their way to Kerbin Station, where they will be awaiting the Karayan, and we can do that crew rotation, and oh, oh, well, you might be noticing that <laughs> extra 180 degree unnecessary roll. Uh, I guess maybe I should explain that. Uh, I, I <laughs> um, it's been a little while since I've launched my space shuttle. Um, I do have a space shuttle a mission coming up, not this episode, but hopefully in a future episode. It's currently being built. And I've rejigified it so that it will ascend in an inverted or upside down alt attitude with the space shuttle on the bottom. So it looks like a proper space shuttle in my my humble opinion. So I had to change my KOS script, but as you can see, there's some roll commands there I still have to adjust, so we got some extra rolls. Uh, it didn't amount to anything, so that's okay. So anyway, what was I at? Oh yeah, we got Luya and Bill, or Luya and Chris Nick, sorry, on their way up to replace uh, Carol and Bill. Tamley will be staying aboard as the pilot of the Karayan, but you'll probably also notice I also have Bob along for the ride. Uh, Bob is going to be the scientist aboard Curb and Station because also being built in the vehicle assembly building right now is a new lab module for Curb and Station. And Carol has been busy collecting scientific data from in and around the moon. And uh, we're going to be inserting that data into that lab module once it's there. And uh, Bob is going to be doing some research and trying to generate some more science for us. As we close in here on the station, the eagle-eyed viewer might be noticing that this Kuryu's is a little different from the two Kuryu's, Kuryu, Kurai, I don't know, <laughs> that are attached to the station right now. Uh, that forward module, the orbital module, is different. Um, it is back to the green one. Um, while the other two have the white one. Uh, I went to the white one because I thought it looked better, but it was only afterwards that I began to learn that there is a difference between the two other than the aesthetic, um, and that is that the white ones are lab modules while the green one is not. And it didn't make any sense for the Kuryu's to have a lab module on it, so I went back to, uh, so I, I put on the lower in the tech tree uh, green one, which is actually a cheaper uh, and lighter module, so it makes more sense to put that on the Kuryu's. Which actually kind of brings me to a second thing I want to do with the Karayan 1 once it's back here at the station. I would love to start doing uh, research on the Karayan 1, but the Karayan 1 has one of these green orbital modules, not one of the white uh, laboratory modules from Homegrown Rockets. So... I'm thinking I'm going to attempt some major surgery on the Karayan 1 when it's back here. Um, and what I'm going to try and do is take one of the white orbital modules from one of the two Kuryu's that you see attached to the station. And 
attach that, replace tape off the green one from the Karayan one and see if I can put the white one in its place. Now there are a lot of parts, docking parts and docking ports and life support that is that are in the way that I also need to remove before I can get the orbital module off. It, it will be an interesting exercise, I think, to say the least. Uh, but you know, it, it could be fun. It, 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 it hopefully will work out, but even if it doesn't quite work out, it could at least be entertaining <laughs> to see me fumbling with these monstrous parts. Anyway, with these guys docked, that puts four people on the station here. Oh man, I need to get some more modules onto this station. This is uh, it's getting a little bit crowded, I think, for these folks. I mean, I suppose there's room for five in each of the three Kuryuses that are attached to the station. It's sort of ironic, I think, that there's way more room in the vehicles bringing them up there than there is actually in the station itself. Why don't we transfer everybody over to uh, the hitchhiker? They can have themselves a little bit of a party here. Yeah, sorry everybody, but these cramped quarters should be temporary. But in the meantime, it's time to hop back out to the Karayan 1 and also hop into version 1.1 of Kerbal Space Program. And what a lovely view we are welcome to as the Karayan is approaching its inclination change here high above the moon. You might notice right away that the GUI, the nav ball, and the uh, portrait stats are rather large. I kind of do like the bigger clear portrait stats, but um, I might need to shrink them down a little bit. I think it's cluttering the screen a little bit too much, but otherwise, uh, most, the majority of the mods that you've been used to in this particular series are back. Uh, most notably, homegrown rockets. I couldn't have come, all my, virtually all my vessels have homegrown rocket parts, so I had to stick with that or else I'd be losing all these vessels. In Interstellar and Remote Tech and, you know, ScanSat and Infernal Robotics and yada, yada, yada. A uh, few mods had bitten the dust so far. Uh, trajectories is gone. Science Alert is gone uh, because they're not ready yet. I hope to be, I hope they will be ready soon, but I could get started without mods like that one. Another mod that's not ready as of this uh, playing is Dang It. I don't have Dang It installed just yet. Ho hopefully Dang It will be up soon. Dang It with its fun little problems it seems to like to throw in on a random basis. But like I said, all the key ones are there. And in fact, I think now with the extra RAM afforded with 64-bit Kerbal, uh, I think it might be worth my time to start exploring those visual enhancement mods once again. But right here, we're looking at all the stock textures as we perform this inclination change with some camera dip de doodling going on. That's as my periapsis dips in and out of the moon's surface. Okay, let's uh, stop with the liquid fuel engines and let's switch over to RCS and we'll finish this off. And actually, what I'm just going to be looking at, I'm just looking at the relative inclination coming at me from Kerbal Engineer's rendezvous data. And I'm just going to keep puffing in this direction. Until that inclination gets pretty low. Oops, oops, it's, it's started going up. So there we go. It's between 0 0.07 and 0 0.08 degrees. <laughs> Easily uh, adequate. We'll orient the vehicle so that it's sure to be catching some rays, that the solar panels are catching some rays from the sun over there. And then we'll go over to map view and we will take a look at the new map view. I do like the way now that you can see which way around you're going in your orbits, that is really convenient to know all that information. But one thing I do want to perhaps draw a little bit of attention to, let's focus on the moon here, is that the icons around the orbits are off. Do you see that? Like the, the apoapsis and periapsis indicators and even the icons for the vehicles, they're not on their orbits. They're just outside their orbits. So it's it's pretty messy looking. Yeah, I, uh, um, that's kind of kind of annoying. But hopefully, I don't know if that's being caused by a mod or if that's being caused by KSP itself. 
Hopefully it's something though that can be resolved fairly soon. Well anyway, we ended up setting up this rendezvous burn without too much issue. So why don't we just hop ahead oh, four hours or so to the completion of this burn. Okay, uh, here let's, let's just stick this onto the retrograde. Burn the rest of this away. Okay, that's good enough. We'll do the rest from map view here. So there's our close encounter indicators. So let's burn a little bit, get them close, a little bit closer together. So, oh, wait, yeah. I always have to have, to have to have the nab ball up in order to do the burning. I'm not sure when that change came in. Okay, we'll finish this off with RCS. Bouncy, bouncy, and oh, oh, we're starting to go back up. Okay, there we go. Our closest approach is less than a kilometer. That's good enough. And that's going to be about three hours away, which is a good thing because uh, there's another vehicle that requires our attention. This is the Karayan 2 in orbit about Minmus, still suffering from this Nerva engine animation glitch. That's just an animation. The engines weren't on, but I, whenever I come back to the vehicle, they're in... Uh, Look like they're in full burn like that, and then I have to shut them down and restart them again in order to get the animation to go away. And that was predating going to 1.1. That's a bug that I brought with me. <laughs> I'm rather clueless on what to do about. But anyway, it is on its way around Minmus to its rendezvous burn. A burn that unfortunately you can't see the animation for, though you certainly can hear it. Uh, and you've seen this before, unfortunately, once I shut down and restart the engines, the animation does not come back. Well, that is what it is. Anyway, Karayan 2 is on its way to Minmus Station, where it's going to dock, and then wait for the Kegel 3, a lander that is very close to Minmus now. It, it, it launched a couple of episodes ago, um, and uh, we'll be coming to the station, and then we will be performing a rescue mission to get Gilly Kerman off of Minmus. But that's going to have to be for a future episode. Right now, we are going back to the Karine 1 and its rendezvous with Wilman. And I'm just trying to close the gap here as much as I can because Bill's going to have to go over there and transfer over that docking port. Actually, just just wait a second. I should no, let, let's let's bring ourselves to a relative stop and get Wilman over to the Karayan here because Wilman uh, he spawned without life support, and uh, I shouldn't leave him here uh, breathing in his own carbon dioxide while. Uh, we're fiddling around with docking ports, so why don't we get them over to the Karayan? And then we'll close this gap a little bit closer. I want to get really close because um, the docking port being a 1.25 meter part won't fit inside Bill's inventory, so Bill's going to have to transfer it over in sort of uh, one motion. Okay, so we'll get in here nice and close, and oh, Oh, groovy. The capsule's tumbling. Of course it's tumbling. Uh, okay, so we need to... Oh, wait, it has no electricity in it. Okay, wait, 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 wait. We're going to bring ourselves to a stop. It's going to need some electricity if we're going to bring it under some control. So we need to get... Oh, that's not Bill. Get back in there, Carol. We need Bill. Bill! There we go. Okay. And uh, Bill's going to need to go and attach some... Oh, he doesn't have his screwdriver. Who's got my screwdriver? Uh, open up Tamley's inventory. Tamley! Er, okay, there we go. So Bill's now got his screwdriver. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to attach over a battery and uh, a solar panel. <laughs> we'll just take it off the grind here. We'll stick it onto the side of the capsule. Uh, that will give the capsule some uh, electricity, which means the reaction wheels will work, which means we can get inside and we can stop its tumbling, and uh, then that'll make this whole process quite a bit easier. Okay, Bill, grab on. There you go. Get inside. All right, and we'll put on the SAS. Put on, oh, oh, the, oh, Bill's an engineer! Oh shoot, of course he's an engineer. I know he's an engineer, but this thing doesn't have a probe body on it. So I have no SAS. I need a pilot over here. 
oh my gosh, I'm so used to having pro bodies on all of my vehicles. <laughs> I completely neglected the fact that uh, an engineer is not going to help here. Thankfully, there is a pro body on the Corian, so I don't need a pilot there. So, Tamley, your job is to get aboard that capsule and hold it steady while Carol is going to bring the Corian in nice and close so that Bill can get out there and uh, swap over that docking port. Okay, just about. That'll do. Okay, now it's time to get everybody aboard. That was certainly a team effort and well done, team. We'll dock with Wilman Scrap here. And then it's time to start thinking about getting all four of these folks back home. I do like this interior overlay button. There, now we can see all four of them in there. A little crowded. Maximum capacity for this vehicle. I also like that you can now expand that out. See all four. I guess I don't know how far you can expand that out. But uh, before you could only see three at a time. Now you can see our entire crew here all at the same time. Anyway, we will plot our return back to Kerbin, which you have seen me do these kind of things so many times before, getting our periapsis down there into the atmosphere. You know, one of the kind of annoying things that I've found now with the new, you used to be able to click on things like periapsis and uh, the height of the periapsis would stay there. Now uh, they've removed that particular feature. Uh, that's too bad. I used to like being able to see it there. Now you have to hover over it all the time. Though here, even hovering over it, the information is not coming up, so I'm just going to have to eyeball it the best I can. I'm also paying attention, of course, to my incoming inclination. I want it to be pretty close to uh, equatorial, so that uh, because I will be rendezvousing with the space station. Uh, hopefully they will get these sort of orbital bugs sorted out pretty soon. And in the end, at least, I mean, at least the game's not crashing. <laughs> I should be thankful, I suppose, just maybe for that. Okay, that, that, there we go. That, that, that ought to do it. Let's burn this thing. Okay, there we go. So this is a 263 meter per second burn. And when I was all done, this left me with 139 meters per second of liquid fuel and oxidizer still left in the vehicle. That's plenty to get my, you know, get my capture and to rendezvous with the space station in low curb and orbit. So uh, all I got left to do is just a time warp out of Kerbin's, or of the moon's sphere of influence. Okay. So let's put ourselves prograde here because our periapsis is around 36 kilometers. I don't have trajectories to help me here, so I'm going to go with about 38 kilometers. So I'm just going to raise it just a little bit. For the arrow breaking part and oh, what's happening why oh jeez oh shoot I had I, oh my gosh I hit Z oh wow okay might have a new UI but it's the same fingers on the keyboard I just hit Z which put me at full thrust which obviously messed up oh, I'm well over 200 kilometers now in my periapsis so I need to burn Bring that periapsis back down into the atmosphere. Oh, what a pain. I'm sure Wilman's not impressed with his... Uh... Oh my gosh. Oh, look at my Delta V. Oh, I only have 37 meters per second left of Delta V. As far, okay, got to so switch to RCS here. Do the rest of this with monoprop. Oh my gosh, I was just about to say, I doubt that Wilman's too impressed with his rescuers right now. He might be a little worried. He might uh, be wishing that he was still back in that capsule. He'll be waiting until he gets the next bus ride home. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, we're going to be hitting the atmosphere in about three and a half hours. Still have a respectable amount of monopropellant about three quarters of the monopropellant reserve, so there's that, but only 37 meters per second of liquid fuel and oxidizer. And we got a rendezvous with the station in low carbon orbit. Oh, what fun. Never can make it easy, can I? Okay then, well, it is what it is now, 
and we're going to be rejoining the crew of the Karine One at the beginning of the next episode and see if they can pull this off. I thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again next time. Thank <laughs> you.